My online romantic partner is the ultimate seductive mature woman. Her voice is sexy, her waist is slim, and her legs are long. All day long, she calls me hubby dis, hubby that dot dot she also acts coquettishly and flirts, melting my heart every time she speaks. After the new year, at a family gathering banquet, I accidentally saw the infamous Ice Queen CEO of Hong Kong scolding her subordinates. That familiar voice, isn't it my online partner? I was petrified on the spot, help, I want to run away. My buddy dragged me to the banquet. Initially, I refused, but after he begged and promised there would be lots of eye candy, I reluctantly joined him. My buddy didn't lie. There were indeed many beautiful women, though compared to my online partner, they were slightly inferior but still charming. We were sitting on a corner sofa, counting our conquests for the night. At that moment, there was a commotion on one side of the hall. We both turned to look. It's Willow. My buddy whispered in astonishment. Only then did I clearly see her face. It was the famous beautiful CEO of Hong Kong, Willow. Willow was sexy and enchanting, incredibly gorgeous, and her assets were worth billions. She was once the ideal wife of every wealthy young man in Hong Kong. But she always wore a cold expression, as if everyone owed her $8 million, despite having many admirers. She was never involved in any scandal. There was once a popular celebrity who tried to approach her and even drugged her drink, almost succeeding. However, he was caught, and his career ended disastrously. Since then, people shifted their focus from Willow is stunning to does Will even like men. I looked away, disinterested, and said, Don't bother looking, she's not someone you can have. Not as good as my little girlfriend. Last night, she sent me a voice message, acting all cute and calling me hubby. It was adorable. She told me she had a social event tonight, so she should be having dinner with clients now. I got excited and opened my phone to edit a message, missing you. Call me hubby. There was another commotion in the hall, making my buddy exclaim again. I frowned and asked what was happening. He looked at me nervously. It seems like Willow's subordinate messed up and is being reprimanded. I nodded absent-mindedly. Not interested. My mind was on my little girlfriend. Suddenly, my phone lit up with a message. Hubby, I'm busy. Can we talk later? I immediately reply, no, I want it now. All right then. Seeing this message, I smirked, but then heard a familiar voice from afar. Hubby, I miss you too. My heart skipped a beat, and I looked over in disbelief. The voice belonged to Willow, the beautiful CEO of Hong Kong. She was expressionlessly operating her phone, surrounded by people who looked terrified. Then my phone lit up again. I opened it to see a three-second voice message from my little girlfriend. It must be a coincidence, I thought, but I didn't want to risk it, so I turned the volume down and listened closely. Hubby, I miss you too. It felt like a hammer blow, but I still hoped it was a coincidence. I didn't reply but turned to look at Willow. After a while, she put her phone away and started scolding her subordinates again, but her voice sounded increasingly familiar. Unwilling to give up, I opened my phone and edited another message. Really, how much do you miss me? I quickly looked up at Willow after sending it. Sure enough, her phone vibrated. She paused, operated her phone quietly for a moment, then put it away and continued talking. Just then, my phone lit up again, so much that I wish I could be with you right now. It's over. My little girlfriend really seems to be the beautiful CEO of Hong Kong. Willow. Willow's voice continued intermittently from one side of the hall, and everyone around was looking at her with strange expressions. Some bold ones had already started whispering among themselves, including my buddy. George, did you hear that? I hurriedly put away my phone, pretending to be calm. Hear what? What Willow just said, she seems to have a boyfriend and was even being coquettish with him. I quickly covered his mouth. Keep your voice down. Do you want everyone to hear? Only then did my buddy realize he might have been a bit too loud and lowered his voice. George, it's such a huge contrast for Willow to act coquettishly with someone. I nodded perfunctorily, my inner shock no less than anyone else's. Willow gave me the impression of an eternal ice queen, a high and unattainable flower, with no connection to me whatsoever. But she turned out to be my online girlfriend. The thought of her usual sweet, and co way of calling me hubby and all the unreasonable demands I made sent shivers down my spine. I tugged at my buddy's sleeve and asked quietly, Do you know Willow well? 
My buddy looked at me with a childlike expression. I'd like to, but do I dare? Did you forget about that celebrity? His words were like a bucket of cold water poured over my head. How could I forget? That celebrity tried to drug her and ended up being banned from the internet and sent abroad. But I, I seemed to have deceived Willow, which might be even worse than drugging her. I pretended to be a 30-year-old listed company CEO in our online relationship, making her call me hubby every day. I also constantly pestered her to act coquettishly for me. At first, she was very shy, but under my influence, she gradually became bolder. And now, I'm being told this shy and charming university student is the beautiful CEO of Hong Kong, Willow. I re-examined her cold face, which had no trace of shyness. The most important thing is, I'm younger than her. I swallowed hard and clutched my buddy's hand. Chen Zi, hypothetically speaking, what would happen to someone who deceives Willow? My buddy gave me a wicked smile. Guess. I didn't want to guess because nothing good could come of it. When I looked back again, Willow had disappeared. A sudden sense of panic overcame me, and I urgently asked my buddy where Willow had gone. He blinked and said, she rushed out with her phone, probably to call her boyfriend. The next second, my phone rang abruptly. I hastily hung up in a panic. My buddy looked puzzled. Why didn't you answer? I lied without changing my expression. Spam call. But the phone rang again the next second, and I hung up again, terrified. I quickly said to my buddy, I need to go, and ran out in a hurry. Are you kidding? Stay here and wait for death. After returning home, I opened my phone with a heavy heart. Besides a string of missed calls, there were countless messages. Hubby, what are you doing? Hubby, why aren't you responding? Hubby, why didn't you answer the phone? Hubby, are you angry? I didn't mean to reject you just now. Next time, if you need anything, I'll do it immediately. Looking at this series of hubby messages, I felt my head spinning. This youthful face of mine, how does it match up with a nearly 30-year-old CEO? Why did I choose such an unrealistic persona, one that completely contradicts who I am? With a sense of wishful thinking, I opened the camera and looked at my face. Sure enough, I still didn't look anything like a 30-year-old dominant CEO. If Willow finds out she's been deceived by a man younger than her, I'm in serious trouble, right? No, I can't end up like that celebrity. Just as I was wrestling with how to respond, my mom called. Hello, George. Come home for dinner tonight. Grandpa has an important guest. You must be there. I responded lifelessly, okay, and hung up. I took one more glance at the screen full of messages before heading downstairs, my mind heavy with worry. I'll just pretend I didn't see them and respond later. Why is Willow at my house? It turns out Grandpa's important guest is Willow's grandfather. Grandpa Liu smiled warmly at me soon as he saw me. George, do you remember Grandpa Liu? I used to hold you when you were little. Hearing this familiar opening, I felt a headache coming on but had to respond politely with a smile. Yes, Grandpa Liu, I remember. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I glanced at Willow, who was sitting on the sofa, silently focused on her phone. Maybe sensing my gaze, Grandpa Liu said, Willow, keep George company for a while. I quickly waved my hands, no need. I'll go see what mom's doing. I turned to run, but my phone slipped out of my pocket and fell right in front of Willow. Damn. And the screen was on, displaying her collarbone photo as my wallpaper. I quickly bent to retrieve it, but Willow was faster. As she picked up the phone, the screen lit up. Damn. My lock screen is a photo of her collarbone. Is it okay for her to see that? I snatched the phone back quickly, eyeing her warily. I'm going to find my mom, I said, and turned to leave. Wait, she suddenly called out, can I see your phone? I instinctively covered my pocket, I don't think that's a good idea, by now. Both grandfathers had noticed the commotion. Grandpa Liu squinted, what's going on? I loudly said, a phone is a private thing. It's not convenient to show it, sure enough, Grandpa Liu's face darkened. Willow, why do you want to see his phone? I'm not sure if it was my imagination, but I thought I saw a slight smile at the corner of her mouth. I just thought George's wallpaper looked familiar, it seems to be my photo, so I think it's better to be cautious since it involves portrait rights. She was looking in my grandfather's direction as she spoke, Grandpa immediately frowned. 
In that case, George, let her take a look. In that moment, I seemed to see the same coquettish little girlfriend who usually acted cute over the phone. I kept my pocket covered. This, it's not really appropriate. I desperately gave my grandfather a look, but he didn't understand, still looking sternly at me. George, a real man doesn't fuss over small things, let her see the phone. With my grandfather's support, Willow smiled and slowly approached me, backing me into the sofa. In that moment, I could hear my own heart pounding. I have to admit, Willow is a top-tier beauty. Even though I've seen countless beautiful women, I couldn't help swallowing nervously. Then I felt something being pulled from my pocket. I immediately realized it was my phone. Willow played dirty and used her beauty as a weapon. She opened my phone and glanced at it, a mysterious smile forming on her lips. Do you know this person? My heart skipped a beat, and I quickly shook my head. No, a senior gave me this photo. It's a celebrity. He's a fan. She nodded. Oh, it's your senior. At this point, Grandpa spoke up. Willow, is that your photo? Willow smiled politely. No, it's just a friend of mine. Grandpa nodded, relieved, and continued playing chess with Grandpa Liu. Willow took out her phone and handed it to me, at my contact. I wanted to refuse, but she glanced at my grandfather, and in that instant, I understood her message. If I didn't at her, she could easily ask my grandfather for my contact information, and then he would know my wallpaper was a photo of her. Once again, I was defeated by her cunning. Fortunately, I had a secondary account. Without hesitation, I used it to add her on WeChat. After adding her, she finally let me go. I quickly slipped into the kitchen and sent a message to my buddy, asking him to meet up tonight. There were some things I needed to discuss with him. My emotions were a mess. Thinking back to how Willow kept calling me hubby on WeChat and sending me various collarbone photos, I wanted to slap my past self. She is the beautiful CEO of Hong Kong. Should I consider myself lucky or unlucky? I finally got an online girlfriend, and it turns out to be such a big deal. Just then, my main WeChat account received a message from Willow, hubby. I just met one of your junior schoolmates at my grandfather's friend's house. What a coincidence, I didn't dare to reply, and she sent another message. His wallpaper is a photo of my collarbone, and he said you sent it to him. How could you share my collarbone with someone else? A chill ran down my spine. Is she going to confront me? Just as I was thinking this, she sent another message. But he told me, hubby, that you said you were a fan. Am I a celebrity in your eyes? That makes me happy. My heart, which had been in my throat, finally settled a bit, but I still didn't know how to respond. While I was hesitating, my secondary account received a message. Not surprisingly, it was from Willow. Can you contact your senior? I sent a bunch of messages to my main account, and then took a screenshot to send to her. Can't reach him, she quickly replied. Do you think something happened to him? He once gave me his address, should I go find him? Seeing this, I couldn't sit still, how did I forget? I had once given her an apartment address. If she really went there, my identity would be exposed. If exposed, would I be exiled somewhere, Africa, or banned from the internet? I immediately switch back to my main account, and quickly reply. Sorry, I'm on a business trip and haven't checked my phone much. Her message popped up instantly. Hubby, you finally reply. I thought something happened to you. I almost went to your house to find you. I breathed a sigh of relief. I'm not at home. I'll tell you more when I get back. After replying, I put my phone away. When I found my buddy that evening, he was already drinking. I sat next to him, feeling down, and downed a glass of wine in one gulp. He looked at me in surprise. What's wrong, George? You seem upset. I thought about my purpose for coming but didn't dare to tell him the truth directly, so I phrased it indirectly. Chen Zi, if you found out someone you cared about a lot deceived you, what would you do? My buddy asked back. To what extent did they deceive you financially, emotionally, or both? I thought about my interactions with Willow. She had bought me many small gifts, which I always refused, but she insisted. So this counts as financial deception, right? And the way she called me hubby every night definitely emotional deception. Moreover, my entire identity was a lie. Isn't that emotional deception too? My buddy saw my complex expression and guessed the answer. 
All of the above, I nodded miserably, and he rolled his eyes. Financial, emotional, and physical deception? If I encountered someone like that, I wouldn't let them off easily. They wouldn't know what hit them, as expected, no normal person would choose to forgive, so if Willow finds out my real identity and that I've been deceiving her, being blacklisted and banned is a certainty. Seeing my dejected look, my buddy patted my shoulder and comforted me warmly. No wonder you're in a bad mood. You got deceived. It's just a woman. She's not worth it. There are plenty of women out there. After returning, I kept pondering over my buddy's words, and it solidified my previous thoughts. No one would forgive being deceived and Willow is no exception. To secure my future, I must not reveal my identity. As I was thinking this, my main WeChat account received several new messages, sure enough. It was Willow again, she sent me many voice messages, and every single one was her calling me hubby and acting coquettishly. She said how much she missed me, how much she liked me, and on top of that, she sent me a bunch of collarbone photos. Another beauty trap, how can I resist? But now, Seeing these collarbone photos, I only feel they are further evidence of my crimes. I wanted to ignore them, but I feared she might show up at my door like she said last time. If my identity was exposed, I wouldn't escape, I had to reply to these messages. I calmed myself, pushed aside those cowardly thoughts, and typed a cold message. Didn't you say you didn't like calling me hubby before, you don't have to force yourself anymore. She replied immediately, it's not forcing myself, as long as hubby likes it, unhappy. I responded, actually, I don't like it that much. There was a moment of silence. Just when I thought she understood and got my hint, she suddenly sent a video that made my nose bleed. In the video, Willow was playing with her hair, her slender and well-defined fingers touching her collarbone while her clean voice sweetly said, hubby, do you really not like it? Like, like, I absolutely love it, but I can't say that. I must not get in deeper, at the very least. I need to keep my distance and reduce the evidence I forced myself to type. Honestly, I don't like it that much, you should do more meaningful things. This time, there was complete silence, I breathed a sigh of relief, turned off my phone, and lay down on the bed, but as soon as I closed my eyes, all I could see in my mind were those voice messages and photos from Willow. I hated myself for being so weak and easily swayed by beauty. I tossed and turned, unable to sleep, then my phone rang again. It was a message from my secondary account. Is your senior in a bad mood? I reply. Why? She then revealed that she was my senior's girlfriend, and he seemed to be in a bad mood, asking me to find out why. My main and secondary accounts exchanged several messages, and I took screenshots to show her that my senior wasn't in a bad mood, just busy. Finally, she stopped asking. I breathed a sigh of relief, but then my main account received another notification, she sent a photo. From the background, it was clear she was outside, so she hadn't replied because she had gone out. I felt confused and a bit terrified, could she be looking for me? I sent a question mark, and she replied. Feeling down, went for a walk, seeing this, I felt a pang of bitterness. I started to hate myself for not being a 30-year-old CEO. Reason told me I couldn't get involved any further, or I would definitely weaken, I could almost see the desert welcoming me. So I gritted my teeth and typed. You're too immature, I don't think we're suitable for each other, let's end it here, I actually prefer women older than me, please don't contact me again, I hope you can mature a bit, without waiting for her response. I quickly blocked her, after blocking her, I resumed my mundane life as a university student, living a routine of school, canteen, and my apartment, sometimes, hearing a familiar voice would make me think of her, and seeing something interesting would make me instinctively want to share it with her. But then I'd remember that we had broken up, and I had blocked her. During this time, she did message my secondary account, asking if I could contact my senior for her, but I always found various excuses to brush her off. I didn't want to fall into the same trap again. Just when I thought we would never cross paths again, something unexpected happened. I was at my grandfather's house, watching TV with him. When he suddenly received a call and hurriedly began dressing, I asked him what was wrong, that he was to rush to explain, urging me to change clothes too. Confused, I changed and followed him out. It wasn't until we reached our destination that I understood what had happened. The call was from Grandpa Liu. 
he and Willow had been in a car accident while going to the company, and Willow was driving. But Willow's parents were abroad on vacation, leaving no relatives in the country. So Grandpa Liu called my grandfather for help. Fortunately, Grandpa Liu only had some minor injuries. When we arrived, he was animatedly recounting the incident to my grandfather. Then he glanced at me with a troubled expression and said, George, my granddaughter is in the room next door, and there's no one familiar to look after her. Could you take this fruit to her? I really wanted to refuse, but seeing Grandpa Liu's expectant face and imagining Willow sitting alone in the hospital room, I softened. Perhaps noticing my attitude soften, Grandpa Liu added fuel to the fire. Willow is really confused and scatterbrained. She recently broke up and has been distracted. Today, she got distracted by something on the radio while driving, and that's how the accident happened. He then gave me a meaningful look and said, George, I'm old and we don't understand young people's issues. You young folks should be able to talk, hearing Grandpa Liu's words. I felt even more guilty. It turned out she had the accident because of me. Fine, I'll go. After all, it's partly my fault. I took the fruit and gave myself a serious pep talk before opening the door to the next room. Willow was quietly sitting on the hospital bed, looking at her phone. Although I couldn't see the screen, I instinctively knew she was staring at our chat history. After some thought, I decided to have a proper talk with her. In the guise of a junior, I kept encouraging her, telling her that my so-called senior didn't dislike her and that she was an excellent person. I peeled an orange and handed it to her. She looked at my hand for a moment and said, Your bracelet is quite pretty. A chill ran down my spine. This bracelet was something I had shown off to her for a long time when I first got it because I thought it was nice. Trying to remain composed, I said, Thanks, my senior gave it to me, I think it's pretty too. Seeing no further unusual reaction from her, I finally breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, I managed to get past this hurdle, I really have to be more careful. I was nervous the entire afternoon, as she kept asking me strange questions, and I was constantly on edge, afraid I would slip up. Finally, after dinner, I could go home, but as soon as I got back, I received a call from Grandpa Liu, George. Thank you so much for today, that silly girl finally agreed to eat properly. She said she likes having you around. I knew you young folks would get along better. Can you come and take care of her again tomorrow? Your grandfather thinks it's a good idea too. You know, Willow's parents are out of the country. Listening to Grandpa Liu's lengthy speech, I knew I couldn't refuse. He had already blocked all my escape routes, but I was puzzled. Why would she tell Grandpa Liu she wanted me to accompany her? Could it be that she discovered something and planned to send me abroad? The thought kept me up all night, and the next day I went to the hospital with big dark circles under my eyes. She looked at my dark circles and gave a meaningful smile. Didn't sleep well last night, for some reason. Her smile sent chills down my spine. It felt like I was a prey being watched. I forced an awkward smile. No, I stayed up late playing games. She responded, weren't you watching some actress? I almost choked, actress was a symbol of my dark history and one of the proofs of my guilt. I quickly changed the topic, Grandpa Liu asked me to make you some food, but I didn't know what you like, so I made a bit of everything. But I made another mistake, I instinctively made some of her favorite dishes that she had told me about before. We looked at the table full of food and stared at each other. She gave another meaningful smile. Thank you. I like it very much. Realizing my mistake, the next day I deliberately made things she didn't like. But when I delivered the food, I realized it was still a problem. Each dish was something she particularly disliked. Isn't that just as obvious? I nervously opened the lunchbox, but she still smiled and said the same thing as the day before. Thank you. George, you've worked hard. I like it very much. I watched her eat bite after bite of the celery she hated feeling increasingly uneasy. Could it be that she had discovered something and was pretending in front of me, just to enjoy my panicked reactions before delivering the final blow? Suddenly, there was a commotion at the door. Willow and I turned to see both my grandfather and Grandpa Liu. I nervously stood up immediately, but Grandpa Liu just smiled and said, you to carry on. Then he pulled my grandfather out of the room. Turning back, Willow's expression remained calm, seemingly unaffected. I said nervously, Shouldn't we go explain to them? Explain what? Explain that we're not? 
Willow smiled again, looking at me, explained that we're not in that kind of relationship. What kind of relationship? We haven't done anything. Don't you think explaining it would make it seem like we're hiding something? Suddenly, her words made a lot of sense, so I obediently sat back down, but not explaining had its consequences. As soon as I got home, my grandfather interrogated me. George, what's going on between you and the Liu family girl? I felt a headache coming on. Grandpa, there's nothing going on. Didn't you agree with Grandpa Liu for me to take care of her? Cooking every day is tiring. Okay. But my grandfather looked utterly confused. When did I agree to that? Bozan girls should have some boundaries. How can you take care of her? My grandfather was still mumbling, but my heart felt like a landmine had been triggered. He didn't agree to it. Then why did Grandpa Liu say that? Could it be that Willa really discovered something? A strong sense of unease flooded my heart. I was so lost in thought that it took several calls from my grandfather to snap me out of it. I'm talking to you. George, you must attend the banquet tonight. We can't afford to offend them. I didn't catch everything he said, but I understood it was about a banquet. Although I didn't like attending banquets, having my buddy there would make it bearable. In the evening, I arrived at the venue on time. My buddy was there too, but his first question almost made me spit out my drink. What was that about a scammer you mentioned the other day, who scammed you? I quickly covered his mouth and glanced around. Thankfully, no one seemed to be paying attention to us. I pulled him to a corner of the banquet hall and sat on the sofa, speaking in a low voice. No one scammed me. Don't bring it up again. My buddy's eyes widened. Could it be you who scanned someone? Wow. George, you've really stepped up. He suddenly blurted out, and I didn't have time to cover his mouth. Before I could stop him, a familiar voice came from behind. Scamming someone. George knows how to scam. Goosebumps rose all over my body. I turned around stiffly to see Willow, smiling. I quickly suppressed my fear and answered her. No, my friend is just joking. Willow nodded with a smile. Oh, I thought George was that good, capable of scamming people too. I forced an awkward smile. Is there something you need? Ms. Liu. Willow gave me a meaningful look. Grandpa Wang and my grandpa are close friends. Calling me Ms. Liu is too formal. Why not call me Willow, like Grandpa Wang does? My buddy watched us curiously from the side. I reluctantly uttered Willow, and she nodded in satisfaction. Then she put on a sorrowful expression and said, Sigh, ever since your senior left me, nothing has gone right. I was momentarily dazed. Do you really like him that much? Yes. She nodded firmly, without him around. Nothing tastes good. Do you think if I went to find him, he'd consider getting back together? I was at a loss. I don't know. He probably has his own thoughts. She added. Can you help me get in touch with him? I feel like he might have some unspeakable difficulties. I can accept anything. My pupils shrank instantly. Did her words have a deeper meaning? Without thinking. I refused. My senior said he didn't want me involved in your relationship anymore. To my surprise, she didn't insist. Instead, she nodded knowingly. Indeed, always asking you to relay messages isn't go. But then she turned to my buddy. Since your classmates, your friend must know him too. Could you ask your friend to help contact him? My buddy looked utterly confused, and the alarm bells in my head were ringing like crazy. There was no senior. I had made it all up and hadn't had the chance to get my buddy on the same page. If Willow revealed the truth now, I'd be exposed. Willow, oblivious to my panic, took out her phone and opened my WeChat profile page. My alarm bells rang louder. I knew I couldn't let my buddy see that, or I'd be heading straight for trouble. I grabbed her hand just before she could show it. But I think, Willow, it would be a shame to miss out on such sincerity. I've decided to help you one more time. I looked serious and almost believed myself. Willow smiled. Thank you, George. She then left happily, as soon as she was gone. My buddy immediately came over. Be honest, what was that all about? What senior are you talking about, and why is the beautiful CEO so close to you? I knew I couldn't hide it any longer, so I told him the whole story. His expressions were dramatic, he went from disbelief to shock, and finally, he was frowning like me. George. What are you going to do now? Maybe you should just come clean with her. I immediately rejected the idea. 
No way. I don't want to end up like that celebrity. My buddy Sai, he knew about Willow's methods too. If she really wanted to mess with someone, even our families combined couldn't stand a chance. Fortunately, my buddy had a friend from our school who graduated a few years ago and started a small company. This aligned with my persona of a 30-year-old CEO. When he heard about our plan, he initially refused. He was busy with work and had no time for such games. We begged him for days, promising to intern at his company after graduation. He finally agreed to meet Willow in my place. On the appointed day, my buddy, his friend, and I went to the designated restaurant. The moment Willow saw us, her smile froze. My buddy and I exchanged glances, and we could see the word panic in each other's eyes, of course. A big news like the beautiful CEO meeting her online boyfriend couldn't have outsiders present. We quickly and wisely left, giving them space. We went to a cafe across the street, with a perfect view of the restaurant. I hadn't eaten breakfast and was a bit hungry, but seeing them together filled me with such bitterness that I forgot about my hunger. They seemed to be getting along well. Willow kept a polite smile, and my friend's expression went from polite indifference to genuine interest, his smile growing warmer. I felt uncomfortable and no longer wanted to observe them. I stirred my coffee absent-mindedly. My buddy suddenly leaned in and whispered, George, are you regretting it? I was stunned. Was I regretting it? Seeing them chat so happily filled me with bitterness, but wasn't this all my own doing? I regretted impulsively starting an online relationship, fabricating a fake persona, and making so many unreasonable demands of Willow. But I didn't have the right to regret it, or else I'd face unimaginable consequences. Besides, Willow seemed quite satisfied with my friend, when that friend returned, draping his arm around my shoulder. I snapped back to reality. His exuberant smile showed he was very pleased with Willow. How could you bear to break up with a girl from the Liu family? Do you know how many resources she has? I shook my head. To me, Willow wasn't the high and mighty CEO of Hong Kong, but the sweet girl who called me hubby and sent me pictures of her collarbone. The friend patted my shoulder. Why don't you let me take over? I'll handle it well. My buddy and I both looked at him. He continued. Such valuable resources shouldn't be wasted. If you really want to break up, leave her to me. I'll manage it well. He began recounting the details of their recent date, but I was still processing his earlier words. The 30-year-old CEO Willow Light had appeared before her, and I no longer had to worry about being sent to Africa. Everything seemed balanced, I made my choice, so why should I be conflicted? All right, I'll leave it to you. My buddy gave me a complex look, and the friend beamed with Joe. But just as he was about to stand up, he froze. Miss Liu, you haven't left yet. I stiffened, too afraid to turn around, as Willow's voice came from behind. Who are you handing me over to, hubby? I was petrified. My coffee cup felt like a cactus, the cafe lights like the scorching sun, and the air smelled of the desert. My buddy and the friend quickly left, leaving me alone with Willow. I still didn't dare to turn around, she chuckled softly. Let's go somewhere else to talk. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I followed her with my head down. She took me to another restaurant and got a private room. I looked around, avoiding eye contact. She ordered all my favorite dishes and asked if I wanted anything else. I shook my head. I'm not hungry. The next second, my stomach betrayed me with a loud growl. The awkwardness was palpable, spreading through every cell of my body. How could my stomach betray me at such a crucial moment? She laughed again. Maybe it was my imagination that I thought I detected a hint of affection in her laugh. Doesn't your neck hurt? She asked. I froze. She continued. How long do you plan to keep your head down? I gave myself a pep talk repeatedly. Even if I was about to face doom, I couldn't lose my composure. I'm afraid. As soon as I said it, I wanted to punch myself. I hated my own cowardice. Afraid of what? That I'll eat you. I wasn't afraid she'd eat me. I was afraid of her revenge. The atmosphere grew tense. Thankfully, the waiter came in with our food. Let's eat first, she said. We can talk afterward. Is this my last meal before execution? We ate the meal in an awkward silence. And after the waiter cleared the table, my heart was in my throat again. Her long fingers tapped gently on the table, each tap echoing in my heart. Suddenly, she said, aren't you going to give me an explanation? 
I immediately stood up, bowed 90 degrees, and apologized sincerely. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to deceive you. I didn't know it was you, I didn't intend to pretend to be a 30-year-old CEO, I was afraid people wouldn't talk to me if they knew I was a university student. I was rambling, my words getting more chaotic and desperate. She seemed surprised by my reaction, she stood up and walked over to me. I took a deep breath, bracing myself for a slap, but she just looked up at me, do I look that scary? I glanced at her and, honestly, she didn't. Even though I had secretly looked at her many times before, observing her features up close still made me marvel. Willow was truly beautiful, she met all my standards, plus she called me hubby and had those collar bones. I quickly pulled my thoughts back and cautiously asked, you're not going to get back at me. She looked puzzled, get back at you for what? I whispered, send me to the desert, like that celebrity. People say you like women. I mumbled some of the rumors about her, and she watched me with amusement, I just keep myself clean, which is why there aren't many rumors about me. My orientation has always been towards men. As for that celebrity, he did end up in the desert, but it wasn't just about the drugging, he was sent by a rival company to steal trade secrets. Someone like that can't be allowed to stay. I was dumbfounded, then why did you like me? She blushed, rare for her. Actually, I don't have much experience with relationships. I just found that I liked you, I was stunned. The renowned CEO of Hong Kong turned out to be an innocent little kitten. Then, you're not angry, I deceived you. She smiled sweetly, actually, I recognized you from the beginning. Grandpa showed me your WeChat many times. Grandpa Liu, why did he show you my WeChat? Willow's eyes sparkled like stars. He said you were his chosen grandson-in-law, I was four. My mind struggling to keep up, so there was no exposure event, no online romance meeting. Willow knew who I was from the start and played along with my act, listening to my tales of being a 30-year-old self-made CEO. I couldn't believe it. Then why did you call me hubby? Because you liked it, she said, looking straight into my eyes. I don't have much experience, but I try to please you because you like it. Her sudden confession left me, a loss for words. The scene of Willow and my friend eating together flashed through my mind. I couldn't help but ask, then why were you chatting so happily with my friend? I thought you really liked 30-year-old CEOs, she patiently explained. We were discussing work, you brought him here. It would have been rude to be unfriendly, I nodded in agreement. Seeing that I didn't say anything more, she asked, so can you give me an answer now? I was confused. What answer? Her expression became serious. Whether you're a 30-year-old CEO or a university student with a routine life, the person I've been interacting with is you, a living, breathing person. I like you for who you are, not for your identity. So, can you give me a chance to be with you openly? My mind froze again. I have to admit, she looked beautiful even with a serious expression. After revealing the truth, I first felt guilty towards my buddies, so I bought a bunch of gifts and personally went to apologize. To my surprise, my friend didn't mind at all and waved it off casually. I just wanted the resources she has, not her as a person. I couldn't help but laugh at his words, despite the trouble, I gained a great buddy. Everything turned out wonderfully, however. My friend didn't let us off so easily. Besides the agreement that my buddy and I must intern at his company after graduation, he also managed to secure several additional projects from Willow before he was satisfied. This made me realize he truly is a CEO. A business person's mindset is something we university students can't match. After resolving things with my buddies, I had to explain everything to my grandfather. After all, I had promised him long ago that if I ever got into a relationship, he'd be the first to know. But my grandfather wasn't too surprised when he heard the news. Instead, he muttered with a pout, I lost the bet to old Liu. So, they all knew about Willow's interactions with me, except me, who was foolishly acting in front of her. I hated myself for being so naive and even more for being so clueless. But now, watching Willow with her cold, indifferent expression wearing gold-rimmed glasses, conducting a video conference with her employees, I couldn't help but feel amazed. Willow's face it is exactly my type, I grinned mischievously. She noticed my gaze, glanced over and then turned back to her meeting, continuing seriously. But the slight redness on her ears betrayed her true feelings. 
This contrast between her serious demeanor in public and her shyness in private was something I found irresistible. I suddenly felt that being a little naive wasn't so bad after all. After her meeting, she gently took off her glasses. I walked over, sat on her lap, lifted her chin with my finger, and said, as I had many times before, call me hubby. And then, I heard the voice I loved so much. Hubby, I really like you.